Hello, welcome to this latest virtual bridge session. Um, I'm delighted to be joined by Lena and David from Caledonian uh, University. It's that's not the correct name, is it? It's Glasgow Caledonian University, and is it Glasgow Caledonia University? No, Caledonian. Caledonian, right? You you would think I would know that. I should have just started with GCU. That would have been the way to go. <laughs> Clearly, but today um, I'm, I'm delighted to say that you're you're here to talk about the induction process um, and moving that online, and that's something that GCU have been doing for for years. It's quite established, so it's really interesting at this point in time to learn a bit more about how it's gone for you, how you developed that, and what your plans are for the future. So, without further ado, over to you, Lena. Thank you. Um, yes, GCU is what we'd normally use, although there is Grand Canyon University. So if anyone Googles GCU, they may get a surprise. Uh, <laughs> so the full name, yes, Glasgow Caledonian University. We've been doing um, this uh, uh, induction for four years now. That's the, going to be the fifth year that uh, we've uh, been doing it online. Um, let me share my screen so I can show you a little bit more. I hope you can see. And uh, I'll just uh, work my way through chronologically um, through the history of the project. Um, can you see the screen just to confirm? Yes, great. So uh, increasingly the universities are moving to digital, especially at this time, and everything possible that can be done online is being done online. And that also involves a lot of new systems in place. Um, any university will have a number of those um, email, usually staff, student, sometimes separate, sometimes the same um, servers, um, the timetabling, the virtual learning environment, the assessment management systems, and there's numerous of them. Um, if anyone wants to try and ask the universities how many systems there would be, it's going to be quite a long list. And even just with the basic ones that students need to get to grips with very quickly, like the VLE and the email and the printing and logging in the computers and the timetabling, it's still quite a list. And on top of that, um, having digital systems, most of the time not fully integrated with one another. Um, let's face it, that's reality. Hardly anyone has a system. Um, it's mostly systems, multiples. And um, on top of that, those systems uh, have different ways to, for students to access them um, on a mobile, on a tablet, on a computer. So any one of them will present its own challenges. So you can imagine the mess that it becomes in students' heads very quickly on. Um, if you've moved jobs, uh, you know how long it takes to get to grips with a new place and the new setup. And we expect students to do that within the first week of their arrival. We say induction week and they get to grips with the campus and the systems and, and the teachers and the, the classes and uh, everything. So it, it is quite a challenge. And um, over the years, we've tried so many different approaches and trying to get the students introduced to everything they need, or at least the most important systems that they'll need very early on. So we've tried large classes. Um, that little picture that you see me there with the red jacket, I even had a little avatar with exactly the same outfit. Um, and uh, we basically have the students uh, on the computer, so we show them and they try it and if there's any issues, we sort them. Uh, one hour of us bombarding them with information and we give them a little leaflet, the one you see there, which initially started uh, with about 48 pages and then the budget was cut so the booklet was cut uh, to 24 pages and uh, we had a lot of staff that had to man those sessions because you can see this classroom that you see in the picture there's uh, another section behind me so it's about 60 students at the time that is still just about manageable for three people uh, one actually talking and running around one showing on the projector what's happening because obviously you need the physical presence and the electronic presence and another one running as a backup when things go wrong. So three people per session for an hour with 60 students going through uh, what we have in our universities, about, about 6,000 new students every year. So it's quite a, a challenge. Uh, you can see the timetable there um, shows uh, the number of resources that we need to run those sessions. So obviously budget cuts and we had to find a different way. Uh, so we put them in big theatres and we put everything online and we tell them, please go online and read all this information. And we even devised uh, a treasure hunt so to ask them to go through the pages and, you know, find those things. We uh, had an Amazon voucher as a prize, please complete this, please, we'll give you a voucher. 
um, we um, had no budget for printing, so booklets went, and now uh, we had the bookmark. Um, that's what the budget was enough for, uh, with all the major links. And uh, a major flop, again, because students were not bothered. I mean, yes, they could read some of those pages, maybe some of them um, actually go and read some of the pages. So you can imagine, very patchy. Um, so we had a lot of backlog afterwards reintroducing this information because students come and ask questions that they were supposed to be answered uh, by them going and visiting those pages. So we had to find a different way. And we um, even did a scoping exercise at the time um, through other universities trying to find good ideas, what people did. And we didn't find anything that really um, was like, oh, definitely we're going ahead with that. Uh, it was mostly, yeah, we send them information. Yes, we give them a video to watch. Um, Sometimes it's a video within the VLE about the VLE. So how they actually get to it in the first place was a bit of a puzzle that no one could answer because they need to be told there is a VLE and this was what it does in order to go in and then watch a video about what they just did. So uh, I think it was a bit redundant. But anyway, um, we didn't find anything. So we had to put our heads together and do something. And uh, looking through, um, our history. It's three of us actually involved in this. Margaret Brown is not uh, with us today. She's the third member of uh, the Cross University team. Between us, we had more than 40 years experience of delivering um, ICT induction. So we've tried, we've tried it all. Unfortunately, when you try too many things, your head is stuck in what you've tried and it didn't work. So it was difficult to see what else can be done. Uh, fortunately, that's where uh, Dave came in with a bright idea to, <laughs> to use um, a module that was uh, originally uh, used for our students in Mauritius um, for the African Leadership um, College and uh, develop the induction as an online module, more or less. Um, an online learning object, but we knew it was way too much information and it's a bit difficult to get the timings right. So what we did is we actually split up the induction. We split it up into pre-induction, which is for all the online systems that students can access the moment they register, the moment their accounts are created. And the campus induction, which is for all the systems that only make sense on campus, like the Wi-Fi or the printers or the labs and all of those things. So we knew from experience that students try to access the online systems way before they come on campus. And when we did the classes, they were already in a big mud of uh, what was what. So we devised that and looked through all the different elements and put them in the right position, pre-induction or on-campus induction. And um, the process basically runs like this. Students register and uh, within 24 hours, all their accounts are created for all the different systems. And uh, we had to ask for help from our information services to get this part implemented. But um, we created, uh, or they created a trigger that sends the students an invitation to go and complete the pre-ICT induction. So the moment their accounts are active, we send them the invitation. Because if we do it earlier and do a, a mass advertising of this, they will try. And if the accounts are not created, they will not work and they will just give up on the process. So we have to make sure it's timed. And because it's when they register, it's individually timed. So it doesn't matter if they register in January or in February or September, they will receive it when they are ready. Um, and they get this email and ask them to complete the pre-ICT induction, which is uh, the PECTE abbreviation, that's where it comes from. And they can do it uh, at their, um, in their own device, um, in their own home, whatever they fancy, as many times as they like, if they need to. And right at the end of it, uh, they leave feedback, which um, Dave is going to talk more about. Um, then the students arrive on campus, hopefully. <laughs> this year will happen again in some form, at least some of them. And uh, then they're told to go on the computers on campus and we have um, an icon on the screen and a pop-up, which I'm going to talk about later, to ask them to complete the second part. And afterwards, um, for the first time, actually, this last academic year, we managed to get a part, just two questions, in a survey that is run annually uh, on all new students and ask them how it was for you. So apart from the feedback we collected at every stage for the pre-induction and the on-campus induction, we also got feedback from the ones that didn't complete it. And that was quite interesting why they didn't complete anything. 
So let me go through, uh, first of all, what is SPECT-T, the pre-ICT induction. And this is roughly what it looks like, but I think I'm just going to let Dave take over and show you a run through. Um, hopefully he's going to be quicker than me because I tend to go rambling um, and show you all the stages um, of the pre-ICT induction, what roughly it covers and how it works. Okay, Doki, I think it's on to me then. This is where the, the switcheroo attempts to work. We'll see what happens here if it goes horribly wrong. And uh, let's go for that one. We'll try that and see what that happens. Right, let's try sharing that one. There we go. Can we all see that one? Yeah, there we go. I think that's okay. Now, as Lena said earlier on, um, when we developed this online version of ICT induction, it was based upon a resource that we developed for distance learning in Mauritius. Um, the, the entire programs we, we developed for Mauritius were um, entirely online with a tutor on site, just to sort of go over some um, basic elements of explanations and things. We tried to make the resource as interactive as possible based upon the whole sort of psychology of learning, monkey see, monkey do. When you do things, you learn, you remember, um, when you can tie in information, text and video, etc. If there's interactions involved in that, people actually remember these things and it's good with learning. So we built um, PICTE based upon the resource that we developed for Mauritius. Now this is it, as you can see in front of you, it gives a quick uh, description of the IT guide and um, we shouldn't really put things like that in there, but um, let's go for um, my name and if I hit enter, it takes you through. As you can see on the top end there, there are a whole series of um, links that will take you through different tabs in the system. Um, you can click on the link at the top, or the arrows at the side here, which uh, we now very kindly redeveloped uh, just last week, and they look all very uh, smart and snazzy there. But the, the resource essentially takes you through the elements of ICT systems on campus, uh, where to get various elements of help, what resources are there, and what web pages are there to give you the information as well. Um, we try to cover every possible aspect that can possibly go wrong. And most of the problems that we generally have to deal with when students arrive on campus, uh, the biggest elements of our, uh, the bands of our life really, uh, were how to get access to email, to GC Learn, which is virtual learning environment, which is Blackboard, we call it GC Learn, and passwords. Passwords are the bane of our life. Uh, our ICT sessions generally were spent trying to get people's passwords reset or uh, just get them activated because uh, IT sometimes didn't get things set up properly. But this resource actually, as we'll explain in a second, gives a good idea of how to get things uh, delivered to the students before they arrive on campus and to alleviate the problems and the issues that can uh, happen before they get there. Um, GC Learn, this is the virtual learning environment. The, the two, um, sorry? sorry? Sorry, Dave. Um, I don't think the screen is changing. I is don't it know not? if it's changing for you, but it's still on the welcome page for us. Oh, okay, okay. Um, Are you seeing change? It's still the welcome hang, hang page. On a second. Oh, hang on, Dave. There we go. Try that one there. Yep. Is that? Yes. There we go. That better. Yes. Okay. Yes. Sorry, apologies. It's the, the three different versions of Chrome open here. There we <laughs> go. Um, so, as I say now, that's the, the, the elements of the contents. It just basically takes you through the system. Um, and to help where you can get help from service desk, learn development centres and the base web pages around the campus. Now, uh, as I said earlier on, the, the issues we, we face generally for passwords and things. So we gave access to the videos for how to change your password, etc. on YouTube as well, which made life a whole load easier and took a lot of our, um, the workload that we would normally have during Freshers Week off our hands so we could drink lots more coffee. Uh, well, for me anyway. <laughs> now, <laughs> GC Learn, yeah, the virtual learning environment. Again, the two elements that we wanted to uh, get through to students before they arrived on campus were A, how to use the virtual learning environment and get used to the aspect of this is where the learning materials are going to be and to, to find a way around it so they don't get confused uh, when they first arrive on campus and the big panic and the big stress hits on them. So we built this little um, activation thing here. When you click on to log into GC Learn, it takes you into the virtual learning environment. And inside here, uh, there should be a student area in here. Unfortunately, the way it's been redeveloped, uh, there's two different uh, views that can be seen, one from staff and one from students. The student version has a little box down here with the word Scotland in it. And when they come back to here and they type in the word Scotland, 
and hit return. It takes you through and says, well done, you have accessed GC Learn and you know how to get access to that system. But more importantly, what this actually uh, tells us later on um, is that the students actually have managed to access uh, the system and their accounts work, which again is one of the problems we had to try and resolve. Uh, again, moving forward, email, the other bugbear that we always had. The, the video is there to how to access your email, etc. But again, we want to make sure these things are working. So we ask them to complete the task. We ask them to send an email from their um, email accounts and to send it through to welcome to gcu at gcu.ac.uk. You can see the email address there. And it auto replies a password back to them. Uh, the password being Saltire, which is all very Scottish. You'll like this, Jason. There we go, type in the word saltire, there we go, and well done. So, the bonus of this, the email that gets sent back to this account, Wiener monitors this on a regular basis, so it gives us an idea of just how many students are actually taking part in the pre-ICT induction. In fact, it tells us exactly how many people have taken part in that, and we know that their accounts are working. And if there's any problems in, uh, at, at this sort of stage, we can actually try and get the help to them as best we can. So it actually tells us that both systems are now working. The students know how to access their email and GC Learn. So happy days, the university can com actually communicate with them from that point onwards, which is absolutely fantastic. Now, this year we had to change a few things because of the coronavirus uh, issue hitting and most of the students that looks like they're going to be uh, being taught from a distance learning point of view. So we put some successful uh, online, uh, tips of successful online attendance and some well, shall we say, social protocol, shall we say, ways to behave in online classes and things. Just information we can give the students that are going to help them to um, move forward with the learning process from an online perspective until such times as they're allowed back on campus again. Um, Office 365, every student has access to this. So we take them through the process of how to get access to the Office 365 and how to install onto their computers and indeed how to use it through the web browser so they can access it anywhere in the world. Um, the all important timetables. Every student cries their heart out, where's my timetable? Where's my timetable? There you are. We tell you how to get it. Even if we arrive on campus, there it is. You can even give you a map on the side there, an interactive map that takes you around the campus so you can actually see the buildings themselves when this thing kicks in. There we go, look at that there. You can even look around the, the, the room in a 3D format. How fantastic is that? So that wasn't, we didn't develop that part. I stole that from somewhere else. How, uh, <laughs> however, the timetables and the interactive map and the, the room uh, numbers and locations give the students a feel for the campus before they arrive there. Again, to de-stress them so that when they arrive on campus, they've got a feeling of belonging already. And Obviously, the other place they're going to have to use is the library and the online resources that come with that. So we take them through a quick uh, introduction to the on, online uh, discovery tool. We'll be using um, these databases, etc., to research the subject um, on campus when they actually arrive, the Wi-Fi, which they're going to require. There's the important things of life, food, air and Wi-Fi, not necessarily in that order. Um, so we give them a good idea how to access the Wi-Fi system and we tell them about TikTok, which is that other fantastic acronym that we had before the video thing had. So um, the ICT on campus, it gives the students uh, information about printers and labs and things on campus. So they've got, again, a good feeling of how to use the resources there and where these things are. Again, to try and de-stress them, to, to make their experience the best it can be. And we built in a little questionnaire. Now this is basically a straight one question. How do you like PCICT induction? Do you like it? Is it okay? Or is it rather poor? And if you could give us a little comment, that'd be very, very nice. We didn't really think this would be overly um, used. We were highly surprised. The detail of comments that came back were eye-opening to say the least. And we'll go through all of that a little bit later on. And just in the sort of completion stages, just well done. And there's another um, system we have on campus for, uh, or before they arrive on campus, just to take them through uh, GC Learn and how to actually access a lot of the materials in there. They give a, a, the students a bit more of a, a feeling of the, the systems that are available outside PICTI. 
And that really is the resource we, we created for them. And it's been, the past couple of years, it has increased in, in numbers uh, who have actually accessed it. And the appreciation level is, again, we will explain in a short while. Um, it really is being appreciated. That you, you'll never please every student. That's just part and parcel. We accept that. Uh, we get some interesting comments about the negative, <laughs> the sort of negative sides of it. But the positives were absolutely incredible. Now, I'm going to cut off of this thing here and ask Lena to take it back to the presentation so we can uh, discuss the elements of... Uh, the feedback, etc. Now, if I can kill this, how do I kill this? Do, 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 I think do, do, do. you should have uh, yeah, you, you should it now. Yes. Yep, that's you. <laughs> that's you. And okay, here we go again. There so, go. there's the brief snapshot of the feedback we got um, and it seems that is sort of settled around this number obviously with little changes that we make and the uh, changes in the browsers and stuff there's little dips up and down uh, going but it's just about um, just over 84 percent is positive um, 12 to 14 percent it kind of varies it's quite neutral and um, it's about two and a half percent at the moment that is the negative um, quotes, the negative uh, smileys. And because we got such a simple way to provide feedback, um, we also pr got a lot of feedback as well, because it doesn't have long screens, long texts and lots of questions. It's pretty simple, like the airport ones, that's where we got the idea, the big screens, because a lot of people will go just a few steps further and just tap. That was enough. Um, so the picture completion, um, is about 70%. Unfortunately, we don't have the exact number. Unfortunately, the way it works, um, because we don't have control and access to the trigger system to say how many emails have been sent, how many invitations have been sent, um, it's a bit difficult to gauge how many actually have completed it. But we got access to the spreadsheet of all students. Unfortunately, new student is a bit of a vague definition. Um, new student for a module only that they've been away for three, four years. Are they coming back? Is that reactivation? Is that new student and uh, different campuses and, and, and uh, associate students? And uh, it was quite, um, quite a range of options that's kind of changed the number. But um, it's definitely above 70. We don't know the exact number. It could be uh, even 80 for the campus based students. We really don't have precise figure. And over 40% provided feedback which is quite impressive. Um, and this is some of the comments, I'm not going to um, spend too much time, but this is an interesting one because this is a student that has been a student with us before. So obviously it's a new student that has received the invitation. Um, she has been a student in 2016, which was the last year we had a standard induction like we did before in classes. And uh, um, she's familiar with a lot of the facilities, but remember having trouble with a lot of the online resources and now she has this and I think so much easier. So this is a snapshot of before and after uh, which we thought was brilliant that she actually shared this with us. And uh, another uh, quick quote, more units should do this so please do share, we try to share as much as possible, it's a simple thing to do um, to go GCU for being helpful and um, this is also um, a a quote from a student that has been in other institutions. Uh, PICT was extremely useful. It gave me the confidence to use GCU Learn. My um, experience of other universities online induction have been poor, unlike GCU. So that's uh, a good one. We don't know which institutions, obviously. It could have been the same one uh, <laughs> all over. And was it the same that they've had bad experience? Now, about the ICT on campus, we'll go very quickly through that because it's the same idea. But what we did a couple of years ago, because the uh, uptake was very, very low. Uh, students were not engaging with this. We had this little icon, the, the, the blue one that you see on the screen here. We had it on the screen. We keep telling the students, but you know, they're bombarded with so much information. So it's perfectly understandable, they just forget. And it stays there for like four weeks. Um, so there's plenty of time for them to complete it. But a couple of years ago, we decided we are just going to do a big pop-up on the screen for all new students, complete it or not, we couldn't distinguish, but all of you get bombarded with this dizzying image. I was actually planning to have it literally pop up on your screen so you see how annoying it is. But hopefully it will trigger them say, oh, there's something here, I better check. <laughs> so 
this is what uh, the ICT on campus looks like. As you can see, pretty similar environment. I don't know how much time we have. Um, do we have uh, time for a quick overview of that one, actually? Because I'm about five minutes left. Uh, yeah. Okay, sorry. So um, it's the same idea, but it talks about the Wi-Fi and the labs and the printing systems and saving work on campus and accessing Office 365 online and the GCU um, apps anywhere and plagiarism and student services on campus, all the stuff that makes sense to know when they are actually physically on our Glasgow campus. And the feedback is uh, better on that one because <laughs> we didn't need to worry about being responsive for different devices. It only run on the computer. So we could actually configure it to be quite, quite smooth. Most of the negative comments were about their experience with their own device that is overlapping text or links that don't work when they actually work is the browser they're using, all sorts of things like that. So um, similar concept, better feedback because it's stuck to one type of device. Um, so some of the feedback, I'll be very brief on that, uh, very informative online induction. I recommend doing the same stuff for the years to come. We plan to, because that means we have no classes. We just do a drop in. We org always organize uh, a drop in for students that have issues that couldn't complete it or have a different kind of question. So they're not left with just that. But instead of seeing um, in my uh, school, I'm in the school of health and life sciences. Uh, we have about 1500 new students um, uh, a year. I see instead of 1500, I see 30 for drop-in. That's quite a difference. Um, and the new to GCU, which gave us a bit more insight, not just about what they feel about the um, actual learning object. We couldn't call it learning object, obviously, for the students. Uh, we called it tool induction, trying to, you know, name it somehow. But um, when we managed to get our question here, we got a lot more information from the students that we anticipated. Uh, and we were very grateful because that led to some changes. But um, it's running for three weeks from week three to week six. So it's just after they've settled into it, they've experienced already, hopefully they've still remembered what they've done in induction week, not all of them, but we got pretty good response rates so we can rely on the information. It's more than um, 1000 um, responses. So it's pretty reliable stats. In terms of the completions, similar sort of feedback that we receive from the uh, tool itself. So good, informative, easy, helpful, useful, you know, just too much to cover. So I just did a, a wordle. Um, the ones that have not completed, this was the interesting part that is very difficult to get access to this kind of information. Most of it was unawareness, which means it just slipped through all the different bits of information that they receive. Um, unfortunately, we cannot advertise too widely about it. All we can do is say, watch out for this email. We cannot share the link because it's timed to their individual registration process. Um, so unawareness is almost half of them, the reason why half of them didn't complete it. Underestimating its importance and uh, overconfidence um, accounting for about one in five of the comments. And just some example comments um, on that, or actually before that, just to give you an idea of what the kind of misunderstandings that this can cause. Um, any guesses of what this could be? I'm not going to leave you too much time, um, but <clears throat> if you can put it, I either talk or put it in the chat. I should yes. say I use one in my ah. house in Japan, so. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Good guess. But if you, if anyone asks you, do you need instructions how to use the loo? You'll just laugh at them until they present you with this. So um, this is why we we try to illustrate the point that the fact that you've used an email doesn't mean that you can use a particular system for email or the fact that you know it exists in the first place. So induction is not training. It is introducing them to the types of system. It's saying that you have a universe email, not how to use an email. And this is where a lot of the misunderstanding happens. They, they think for some reason that this induction is a training tool. It's a course when it's not. And um, that's why we get that, especially the overconfidence. I'm fine with IT, I can deal with this. Can you imagine starting a new job and no one telling you what the systems are? how long it's going to take you to figure them out that they exist in the first place and how to use them. So it's exactly the same for students, but for some reason, I, I know how to use computers, I'll be fine. Um, so there's a lot of comments here all the way through for exactly the same kind of tone, like 
I know what I'm doing. And um, this is probably the most illustrating of all. I spent five years working at Imperial College providing ICT support for student staff and guests, so I do not feel like this would be an overly beneficial to me. Surely you've answered enough questions to know that the fact that you're confident with ICT doesn't mean you get confident with the systems. And this is where actually we have the same response actually for tech talks. I'm just going to go very briefly. Unawareness, the biggest uh, response and underestimating its importance, misunderstanding, um, also one in six, similar sort of um, things. There's too many other things. I'll deal with this later, never got around to it. So they don't know the importance of the information that is actually inside. They'll figure it out. And um, unfortunately, that's not the case, as we well know, because of the questions, they come up again and again. So the misconception of what those two things are uh, was the biggest um, finding. And we've uh, revised the wording of the email invitation they receive now, and we try to communicate that this is a guide to the GCU systems, not the ICT systems, but specifically GCU ICT systems. So hopefully, it will change in their mind that this is not just genetic tool, it is specific to the university you're joining. We'll see if that works. <laughs> this is only this year, so <laughs> we're just in the process of now actually getting around to this. Um, so I think we managed to just squeeze. Yes, uh -huh, uh -huh. We, we have um, just a minute or two for just some questions, if anyone has one. Um, one. One that I'm just going to throw in very quickly is in the TikTok induction process, do you have a series of tasks similar to the PICT uh, series where you get people to do something and then it um, feeds back to them? We, we discussed it and we decided the information is too short anyway. It takes about 10 minutes to go through that. And uh, it's going to be quite made up task uh, without a purpose. So we decided to leave it. We were thinking of getting them to print something, getting them to connect to the Wi-Fi, stuff like that. But um, we discussed and we thought they're probably already connected to the Wi-Fi because that's the very first thing they do before they log in the computers. And uh, asking them to print something just for the sake of completing a task is a bit bit much um, or finding a lab or anything any of those additional kind of information will be just made up and too much um, effort for not a lot of return so we kept it quite brief and to the point and it's much shorter as well the picture takes about 30 minutes to complete on average um, if you watch some of the videos and follow some of the links um, tech talks about 10 minutes uh, any other questions? A final question from yeah, Jason? One for me, ideally. I think we all know that people approach uh, IT systems in different ways. There are some that would just like to muck around with that until they work it out, and others who would like to read the entire manual before touching it. Um, is there anything you've found that enables the different ways, different approaches, uh, different learning preferences? Um, with this one, because it's induction, we don't really go into the details of each of the systems. It is pointing out to the system and giving them just a brief outline of what they could find inside. Um, and uh, afterwards, it's up to them to figure out if they need more. There are instruction booklets available and they have contacts uh, to, for people, for me, Dave and Margaret, for additional training if they need to. Um, but we keep the induction as signposting mostly and introducing them to the concept of those systems rather than the functionality. So we don't deal with the ones that uh, need additional training at this stage. <laughs> we'll deal with them later. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> thanks for that. Now, th th that's all, unfortunately, all we have time for for this recorded element of the session. So for those of you joining us on YouTube, thanks for joining us and hopefully we'll see you at a future live session. But until then, thanks for joining us and stay safe.